investors behave in very human ways, which is they get very excited during bull markets and they look in the rearview mirror and they say, I made money last year, I'm going to make more money this year, so this time I'll borrow, you know, or, or the neighbor says, you know, I wasn't in last year when that neighbor was dumber than I, I made a lot of money, so I'm going to go in this year. So they're always looking in the rearview mirror. And when they look in the rearview mirror and they see a lot of money having been made in the last few years, they plow in and they just push and push and push on prices. And when they look in the rearview mirror and they see no money having been made, they just say, this is a lousy place to be. So they don't care what's going on in the underlying business. And it's, it's astounding, but that's, that makes for huge opportunity, just huge opportunity. I wrote an article for Forbes in 1979. I just said, how can this be? Pension funds in the in 1970, put 100 and some percent of their new money in stock because they were wild about stocks. Then they got a lot cheaper, and they put a record low in, 9% of their net new money in in 1978 when stocks were way cheaper. People behave very peculiarly in, in, in terms of their reactions because they, they're human beings, and they, they get excited when others get excited. They get greedy when others get greedy. They get fearful when others get fearful, and they'll continue to do so. And you will, you know, you will see things you won't believe in your lifetime and securities markets. And the lessons are that people will continue to make the same mistakes they've made. I mean, if humans, and whether, it, it doesn't correlate to IQ particularly. I mean, they, when, they get, when they get greedy, and we had this huge bubble in the most important asset the American public has, housing. I mean, so you had a huge bubble in something that you could borrow heavily against. So you could run a margin account effect on a house instead of stocks. And, and the conditions got very lax, and so when that bubble popped, but people came into that gradually. When they get fearful, it happens all at once. I mean, when everybody wants, when people get scared, they all want to leave at one time, and we had them all want to leave at one time, and we'll ha that'll happen again. Uh, but fear, greed, folly. <laughs> Not gonna know, change. We, no, we haven't, we haven't <laughs> got rid right. of those. I, you know, <laughs> we, we get smarter in all kinds of ways. We don't get smarter emotionally. Why is that? It's just the way the human animal is put together. Yeah. You know, I mean, it. Uh, the memory fades, and all of a sudden, the new temptation is there. Yeah, you know, and plus, you know, plus being greedy can be fun for a while. I guess. <laughs> I mean, if it, you know, leverage can be fun when it works. Yeah. Leverage, leverage is one of those things that works 99 yeah. times out of 100, and when it doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, it's all over. <laughs> <laughs> Humans, you know, they, they they all think they're Cinderella at the ball, you know, and they think. You know, as the night goes along, the music gets better and the drinks flow and everything, and they think they're going, all, they all think they're going to leave at two minutes to 12. And of course, there's no clocks on the wall, and they're still dancing. So it'll happen again. But buy when it happens. <laughs> Next question. I'll be buying. <laughs> Anybody that is going to be a net saver, practically everybody in this room is more likely to be a net buyer of stocks over the next 10 years than they are a net seller. So every one of you should prefer lower prices. I mean, if you're going to be a net eater of hamburger in the next 10 years, you want hamburger to go down unless you're a cattle, cattle producer. And if you're going to be a buyer of Coca-Cola and you don't own Coke stock, you hope Coke, the price of Coke goes down. I mean, you're looking for it to be on sale this weekend at your supermarket. You want it to be down on the weekends, not up on the weekends when you're going to attend the supermarket. Your stock exchange is a big supermarket of companies. And you're going to be buying stocks. What do you want to have happen? You want those stocks to go down, way down. Well, again, I mean, I love it when the things we buy go down. I mean, uh, that, I mean, I just, I get euphoric, you know. I, the stocks are down today, and I'm buying more of something I was buying yesterday. I'm buying it cheaper. People with their stocks, they, they think that the stock knows more than they do. So that they, when the stock goes down, they say the stock is telling them something, you know. And, and it was selling me is I can get more for my money. <laughs> but but they, uh, they take it as kind of a referendum on themselves, you know. And it's me versus the stock. If it ever gets back to what I paid, I'm going to sell it. You know, you buy... 100 shares of General Motors. Now, all of a sudden, you have this feeling about General Motors. I mean, if it goes down, you may be mad at it. You may say, well, if it just go up to what I paid for it, you know, my life will be wonderful again. Or if it goes up, you may say how smart you were and how you and General Motors have this love affair and everything. The stock doesn't care what you paid. I mean, I, you have to remember, the stock doesn't even care that you own it. You are nothing to the stock. <laughs> That's, that stock is everything to you, you know. And you remember you paid $10.13, and therefore the stock should get to 10.13 before you sell it. You know, the stock has no feelings about you. you know? <laughs> I hate to disillusion you on this, but it, it just doesn't care. <laughs> so, 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 Warren, you, you've been known to uh, have some great quotes over the years, and I wrote down a few of them, and I, few of them. this is one of my favorites here. It says, 
You can't produce a baby in one month by getting nine women pregnant. Yeah. So w what does that mean? <laughs> it, it means that there are some things that can't be hurried up. You know, like building, yep. a, like building a brand or something of the sort. Okay. You know? I mean, you can't build a brand in a week or a month. Or, I mean, there, there are some things you have to set out to do that you know that there's a given timetable to, and you've got to be willing to play it through to the end. You know, and you won't necessarily have somebody declaring you the winner 10% yeah. along the way or 20%. If you can't stand that time horizon, forget about getting on that, you know, on that particular task. Why, why do you think there is such a uh, impulse for people to have to trade in and out of their investments and, and trade in and out of you know, whatever it is, bonds or, or commodity? I mean, is, is it, do you think it's... It's so simple, too. I mean, if, if you were looking at a small private business in Omaha and you had some money uh, to buy into it, Maybe it's a McDonald's stand. Maybe it's a dry cleaning establishment. Big furniture what, store. What would you think about? You wouldn't think about, you know, what, what Janet Yellen's going to say next week, you know, or something. You wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be listening to the chatter on TV. You'd be thinking about the competitive advantage you might have, who might compete with you, what the return on capital is, what kind of a partner you're going to have in running it. All, all of the things that are fundamental to a business. Yeah. The biggest problem most people have is they don't think about a stock as being a part of a business. Mm -hmm. Now when they buy a farm, they think they're buying a farm and they, they say how many, how many bushels of corn will it produce or how many bushels of soybean will it produce in an average year, what are the taxes, what do I have to pay the tenant farmer? They look at it as an actual farming business. When they buy an apartment house, they say what can I rent it for, or how much vacancy will I have, what will it cost me to manage it, how often do I have to replace the roof, all of it. They look at it as a business. But when they look at a stock, a lot of people, when they look at a stock, they just look at it as something that people say may go up or maybe it'll split next week or, you know, or, or somebody's got a target price on it. Can you imagine having a target price on a farm or an apartment? Yep. It's crazy. Yep. So the key thing is to think about a stock as a part of a business. Just forget about the stock part. Do you of think it. people don't or the vast majority of people don't because just because you can trade it? Because yeah, it's exactly. Business. Liquidity That's... makes them do stupid things. Yeah. The very fact, liquidity, which should be your friend. Yes. The fact that you can get out of it 10 minutes later, which you can't do with a farm or an apartment house, yeah. that should be your friend. But they turn it into a negative.